Hey guys, I'm Dr. Pranay. This is my first video on my brand new YouTube channel dedicated to human physiology. The channel is called iPad Lectures, well, because the acronym sounds cool, and it also stands for I Physiology Panda Doodles. Why that name? Because you can be as chill as a panda, but still learn the basics of physiology that feels in a way fun but not forced. I make use of simple explanations and cute little doodles to break down complex topics and make you understand at your own pace and actually enjoy the process. So I'm very excited now. Let's begin with our first topic, the functions of cerebellum. Let's start. This is the official logo of my channel. If you find this anywhere, know that it's me. And this is a format I will be using to explain my concepts. I hope uh, this works out well in the future. If not, we'll keep adapting as per the suggestions. So starting with the topic, it becomes very important when you discuss functions of cerebellum that you imagine cerebral cortex and cerebellum as two separate beings okay, who have their minds of their own, no pun intended, but they also uh, design, they are also designed to work in a way that they are restricted by some aspects and they complement each other when they work together. So for this, it becomes important for you to understand how cerebral cortex and cerebellum, they coexist and they coordinate all the activities. But our main focus would be on cerebellum. So now let us understand broadly the functions of cerebellum, which is classified into three. One is to maintain balance and equilibrium. Other is to coordinate motor movements. And the most important one is to plan and time the sequential movements which happens in our day-to-day -day life subconsciously which we do not value or appreciate it well enough but we cannot survive without the presence of cerebellum and perform enhanced tasks as a human being. So moving on to the first function, how cerebellum maintains the balance and equilibrium of our body at different circumstances, at different situations. It is achieving this task with the help of other sensory organs which has the same function that is to maintain balance and equilibrium. What are the other organs you ask? They are the eyes and the vestibular apparatus. Okay. So we are going to discuss in detail about the other organs as well. But today let us focus only on cerebellum and how it is coordinating with these organs to achieve a state of balance and equilibrium. As you can see, there is a bidirectional communication of cerebellum with the eyes and with the vestibular apparatus. Okay? So you need to know that there is a structure in midbrain called medial longitudinal fasciculus that coordinates all the movements of eyes and it relays the information to the cerebellum. Okay? So let us not go in depth about everything. Let us focus just on the basics of cerebellum and slowly, slowly as we learn uh, in our channel, we will understand these complex terminologies and that would help you prepare for your exams well. Okay, so the other aspect you can see here is the correlation of cerebellum to that of the postural muscles. We will see now that how cerebellum attains a state of balance and equilibrium and it constantly corrects our posture through several mechanisms. Let us imagine a scenario where you fall off a chair or you fall from a certain height. Okay. This triggers our sensory organs like the vestibular apparatus, the medial fasciculus bundle and our postural muscles. All of these structures send a signal immediately to the cerebellum and the cerebellum now tries to process it and now the cerebellum tries to attain a new state of balance because as we fall, the first response is to stretch out our arms. Okay, There is stiffening of our postural muscles which is situated next to the vertebral column. So how is this response so quick? Because it is coming from our cerebellum that receives the stimuli from vestibular apparatus, from the eyes, from the muscle itself. And now it is sending a strong excitatory stimulus to the postural muscles. And through the stimulus it has received from all the different organs. It has anticipated the change in posture and it is sending a signal which controls the postural muscles in a state of change in balance okay this is called anticipatory correction of postural muscles through sensors this is very efficient very fast and it helps you immediately correct your posture whenever there is change in the inclination or change in any sort of horizontal or the vertical plane so that is our first function that we have seen 
Moving on to the next function, the most complicated or quite difficult to understand is how it coordinates different motor commands and performs motor tasks. So in order for you to understand, I have made it very simple in the form of a flowchart and also in the form of a brief comic that I hope would make you understand this function of cerebellum and make you remember it for a very long time. Okay. So let us see, let us see the example later on and first we will see what exactly happens. Okay. So like I told you in the beginning of this video, there is cerebral cortex, there is cerebellum. Let us imagine both of them as separate entities. Okay. So you need to understand cerebral cortex is the highest seat of intelligence where all the signals are generated and they are sent to the entire body. Okay. So the part of cerebral cortex which is in our concern today is motor cortex. The motor cortex, the primary motor cortex, the premotor cortex and the associated areas, all of these areas which forms the motor cortex send a signal to the muscle to perform a task. Simple as that. You get a signal from the cortex and you perform a motor activity through the muscles. Okay. So for this you need to understand the signal that is generated from the motor cortex uh, in the form of a command reaches the muscle and as you can see, even though the movement has resulted, it is unsuccessful. Okay, And this is the problem that lies with the motor cortex. So we have cerebellum to correct the movement and it does by a very unique mechanism. It is not only helping the motor cortex correct the signal, but it is constantly receiving signal from the muscle itself. So the muscle is also a sensor. The muscle keeps sending signal about the length, the tension and the position to cerebellum constantly and the cerebellum always is in contact with the muscle or more specifically the muscle spindle and naturally it is also in contact with the motor cortex and this helps the cerebellum to actually coordinate with the motor movements and achieve a perfect task. So let's see this guy called John and his task is to greet his friend with the handshake, simple handshake. Okay. So for this, the motor cortex has a plan. The plan is to send signals to the arm and the forearm muscles to help him achieve the task of handshake with his friend. So now the motor cortex, which is a part of cerebral cortex, is now sending a signal to our arm muscles. And once it successfully sends a signal to the arm muscles, you would expect John to successfully complete handshake. But what actually happens is the intended movement which was supposed to make John complete the task of handshake is now unsuccessful and it is nowhere closer to what was actually intended. So motor cortex intends to do something but it actually doesn't perform what it has intended. So it resulted in an uh, incorrection or an unsuccessful motor movement. But don't worry, we have cerebellum to immediately take over and help motor cortex to achieve this task. So if you remember from what I just said, cerebellum is in constant connection with the motor cortex and also the muscle. Muscle acts like a sensor. Okay. So it sends signal to the cerebellum through which track we will see later on. Okay. Don't worry about it. But it sends signal to the cerebellum about its length, tension and position. So the cerebellum now takes command from the motor cortex that it has to send a signal and it constantly receives signals from the muscle spindle and then what happens is the cerebellum now compares the intended movement which was supposed to be taking place as per the motor cortex and it also gets the actual movement that would happen because of the positioning of the muscle which is constantly being received and it now compares this movement from the intended movement uh, from the motor cortex and the actual movement from the muscle spindle. It is trying to compare these two signals and now it is going to correct the signal that is help the cortex achieve the task from the signal that is constantly receiving from the muscle spindle and to overcome the error that would be possible if there was no cerebellum at all. Okay. The motor cortex sends a signal, incorrect handshake. But now the cerebellum 
takes care of this problem by constantly receiving the input from the muzzle spindle and the intended movement from the motor cortex it compares these two signals corrects it and sends a new signal now which helps john to achieve handshake successfully so as you can see thanks to cerebellum the corrected signal is now sent which finally resulted in the successful handshake not only this at any plane whether it is horizontal inclined vertical the tasks are achieved very smoothly because of the constant feedback from the muzzle which is being sent to the cerebellum and this constant loop of uh, interconnection between the muzzle and cerebellum it helps the cerebellum to achieve a task on any plane now let us see how cerebellum is able to send the corrected signal to the muzzle uh, once it compares the initial intended movement and the actual movement so this is possible through this pathway now what we are saying is the communication of cerebellum with that of the cerebral cortex and then it is also in communication with that of the muzzle so once the comparison and the correction is successfully done it sends the corrected signal back to the motor cortex which then reaches the spinal cord and to the muzzle and the task is now successful or it can send the same signal to the red nucleus which enters the spinal cord and again relays on the muzzle and it sends the corrected signal now you need to understand what part of the areas are in constant connection between the cerebellum and the cerebral cortex which you can see here will be discussed further in the functional anatomy we will touch on these topics where the cerebellum is divided into functional and phylogenetic and anatomical divisions and we will understand we will now try to coordinate the functions with that of the anatomy also i want you to pay attention to this word called efference copy okay so efference copy is nothing but once the corrected signal is sent to the muzzle the muzzle is able to perform the task of handshake now the corrected signal is again sent back to the cerebellum for a recheck or for reconfiguration of the corrected signal the corrected output that was sent the cerebellum also has a copy of that and it is constantly scrutinizing the movement and it is trying to correct it all the time every second okay this is how beautifully cerebellum is connected to different parts of our muscles and the motor cortex and that is how we perform all the tasks with well coordination <laughs>